All right, I'm Jason Whitlock. That's Marcellus Wiley. That dude. Yes, sir. All right, welcome to Speak for Yourself, the most fearless show in sports. Coming up, we'll tell you if Kyler Murray or Daniel Jones has more upside. And one hour from now, we'll get into the latest on Tom Brady and will this be his last season. But we start today with Antonio Brown. I think Antonio Brown is crazy. What about John Gruden and Mike Mayock? This Oakland Raiders Antonio Brown frostbitten feet helmet saga is dumb, dumber, and dumbest. Break them however you want, but here's my order. Mayop, the Raiders general manager, is plain, ordinary dumb. He epitomizes the Peter principle. He's been promoted to his level of incompetence. It happens to all of us. We're all just one job promotion away from being in over our heads. When this saga concludes, Mayock can return to being a solid football broadcaster. Brown, the Raiders' frostbitten, helmet-phobic receiver, is dumber. A six-round pick out of Central Michigan, Brown has made more money than he could have ever rightfully imagined. I don't blame him for being delusional. He wasn't prepared for wealth, fame, or emotional maturity. Like a lot of modern athletes hooked on social media, A.B. is a narcissistic self-worshipper who has his own mega church on Instagram. Dumbest is John Gruden. He's so full of himself, he hired a general manager whose career in the NFL consisted of a cup of coffee with the Steelers and the Giants as a player in the early 1980s and as a TV broadcaster slash draft analyst the previous 15 years. Some people think Gruden only hired Mayock because Mel Kuyper, Todd McShay, and Colin Cowherd all said no. Gruden is so full of himself, he ignored all the public information available on Antonio Brown, traded for him, and handed him a reworked contract. In March, during a national interview with ESPN's Jeff Darlington, Brown made it clear he would be good with retirement. Last September, ESPN's Jesse Washington wrote a long story detailing Brown's addiction to Instagram and off-the-field drama. Brown publicly threatened violence against Washington for writing the story. But the biggest red flag Gruden ignored was the Steelers' willingness to trade the NFL's most productive receiver for a third round pick. The modern day Jerry Rice for a three. Come on, man. When a five-year-old S-Class Mercedes is on the market for the same price as a five-year-old Prius, you better check the car fact. You better. There's something wrong with the motor and the tires. Gruden looks worse than AB. Gruden is the guy with a $100 million contract who sounds every bit as delusional as AB. I don't know um, what anybody's writing or what anybody thinks, but this, this foot injury wasn't his fault. You know, this was a total accident. It was, really wasn't his fault. And it's a serious injury. I know some people are smarting at it, but it's really not a laughing matter. The guy is, 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 was hurt. He was innocent. He didn't do anything wrong. Gruden sounds like A.C. Collins the day police put cuffs on O.J. in Brentwood. And later, Gruden promised not to rest until he found the real A.B. We hope Antonio is back here soon because uh, he's exciting to be around. I'm excited. I got some plays for him. I hope we can start calling him. I have a lot of confidence that he's one of the premier competitors I've ever been around. And I got a feeling he would play with no helmet. That's how much he loves to play. Gruden needs to stop. He traded away Khalil Mack and Amari Cooper and traded for a guy who doesn't really want to play football. Gruden is the dumbest person in the Raiders saga, and that's saying a whole lot. All right, joining the desk now are two former NFL head coaches, Eric Mangini, and making his first speak for yourself, FS1 appearance, Jeff Fisher. Marcellus, I'll start with you. Yeah. Who looks worse here in the AB saga, Brown or Gruden? I don't think either one looks bad. I'm going to be real. I think the news is splashing. Holy cow, we stopped the press. No one looks bad. No, no. I mean, well, look, where the rubber meets the road in terms of what I consider bad is in production. So all this is just noise. All this is just smoke. I'm looking at this situation like as a preseason. And we're talking about A.B., who's missing training camp other than two practices, and he has his reasoning. And then we're looking at John Gruden, who has a 10-year contract, which is longer than six of the 10 most active coaches in terms of their tenure right now. That means his contract terms are longer than most guys are even going to be allowed to coach, even if you win a Super Bowl. You could ask Pete Carroll about that, who hadn't even been there for 10 years in Seattle. So I think right now there's a noise level that is higher than ever. But it goes both ways. It's the same classic hits that the media always plays in the preseason. There's two ways this goes. If something good happens, oh, it doesn't matter. It's just the preseason. You know, Detroit Lions were 4-0 the same year they went 0-16. Remember that? Okay. So, so, oh, this is great. Oh, they're going to go undefeated. They're going to win the Super Bowl. No, they're not. 
And then the flip happens. If something bad goes on in the preseason, we blow it so out of proportion and forget that this has to meet reality. And right now, they're not in that place. So I don't think either one looks bad. If you're forced, gun to head, say, who has the most to prove? It's Antonio Brown, because he doesn't have the same guarantees and security as a John Gruden. Well, he has a lot of guarantees. And, and to me, this is Antonio Brown. And, and to criticize Mayock or, or John for trading for Antonio Brown for a third-round draft pick, to me, that's a pretty small barrier for a guy who's had $30 six, million in new money. But he's also had six 100-yard receiving years in a row. He had led the, the league in receptions with 15 touchdowns uh, last year. So the, the production and, and trying to defend against him over the course of time, he is a really special player. So to get him at that rate, that was a pretty unique opportunity. And John has dealt with guys that have had character issues in the past, and he's done a good job with it. So I, I understand why he would he would look at that that risk reward and think that it was it was suitable. I mean, Odell Beckham goes for thirty million. A, Odell Beckham goes for a number one draft pick. I mean, that's a much higher price for a guy who isn't as productive as Antonio Brown. You know, in terms of of the injury to, to his feet, I don't understand how that could be an accident. I'm gonna I'm gonna just have to take John's word on that. That to me. I, I don't understand that, well, that aspect of it. Uh, and, and the helmet issue, look, that, that's not going to get resolved in any way besides the league is going to have you wear one of the helmets that you're supposed to wear. So the quicker Antonio Brown comes to that realization, the better. But John really has no alternative but to support him in this because ideally you you got to get him to Sunday. I'll agree with Coach. Uh, loved your opening monologue, but I a little did rough. Not a little rough. You didn't have anything to do with it, Coach Gruden? So, you know, it's way too early. It's just way too early. I mean, you got two issues. I mean, we would be concerned if you got one thing with the foot going on, and now you got the helmet thing. Who who knows? Maybe the helmet thing's kind of a buy yourself some time until the foot gets better, so that guy can get on the practice field. But the bottom line is 74 touchdowns and 11,000 yards, and he's a good player. So let's let this thing play itself out. Uh, they're getting to know each other a little bit. I'm confident that that uh, Coach Gruden hasn't had his official training camp meeting where they go through the rules of what you do and don't do as far as phones in the meeting rooms and tweeting here and tweeting there. You know, they'll get all that stuff straight. But I think we're, we're jumping out there way, way too okay. soon. Two guys with long coaching tenures in the NFL. One guy played in the NFL for 10 years. I'm sitting here blown away because what I think I'm hearing from you all is like, man, if you knew what the kind of crazy stuff that goes on in the NFL, this doesn't really shock yeah. you all. A little desensitized over here? You <laughs> yeah, to yeah. Is, yeah. That, is that what I'm hearing? I mean, you, we left ourselves two hours a day for stuff that came up mm -hmm. that you didn't anticipate. But... Again, well, let's just say this. Ask this, ask this question. If they don't do the, the Cleo Mack trade or they don't trade the receiver to Dallas and they're both on the roster, granted, they may not have Antonio Brown, but if both those guys are on the roster, what are, the, what are there big issues? Mm. You know, look, I, I take it like this, Coach. The reason I sound desensitized maybe to someone who's outside this locker room is you could go back to when the Patriots... And their demise was predicted, what was this, in 2017 in the playoffs. Oh, it's crumbling in Foxborough. And everyone ran with that. They've been to two Super Bowls and won one since. And I, look, I'm just trying to tell you what the... We're talking about the Raiders. I, look, I don't give a damn who you're talking about. The Raiders have a, a lot of history, A history of winning. Dysfunction. And, uh, and not of recent history. But let me tell you what A.B. is standing on. A.B. is standing on one. There is actually a real objective reason why he's, uh, he's objecting to this new helmet. There's a vision bar that a lot of receivers complain about. You got to get used to it. A.B. will get used to it. I think A.B. will be in camp sooner than later. But the other part is the NFL. And A.B. is calling BS on the NFL, and I'm glad he is. Because the NFL has now come up with the new standard of testing, which is recent because of the lawsuit settlement in 2016. There's a five-year relationship between the union, NFL, blah, 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 boring. But here's the thing. The NFL gave these players a transitional year. You know why they gave him a transitional year? We want to ease you into these new helmets. Are you kidding me? NFL, 
You don't... One year, you want us to go out there and play with a helmet that is substandard, and if we get brain damage in that one year, it's okay? And if not, oh, we have to switch helmets? You know what I it was? If there's 1,700 players, one oh. guy is refusing to wear the new helmet. One guy is refusing it because he has the stones. One guy is not the only one objecting to it, but he won't go... He's the only one going to this measure. What about that transitional year? What about the fact that his helmet has been proven not to be substandard by the new procedures? Except we're not going to go back that far to test these helmets. Why won't you? Just to protect yourself in lawsuits, not based on the integrity of the game or how this guy feels in that performance. I, I think I'm more in line with Jeff in, in the sense that the helmet feels like a little bit of something to buy time to get away from the feet and get away from all the other stuff as opposed to... And look, maybe maybe his his motivations are that pure and 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 are that principled that he wants to take a stand here. But it just feels a little bit more like if he's dealing with the the helmet issue and fighting that, at least everybody's not talking about the other thing, which is the feet that he really has no control over until it it gets healed. And I, I tend to agree with you all. I know these two guys well, Jeff. I'm assuming you have kids. Yes, Th sir. This sounds like a kid with a little smoke screen. <laughs> He's created one. He got busted smoking pot, and he's now deflecting to something else so he doesn't have to answer those questions. And he's got Gruden. Oh, it's a total accident. A.B. did something stupid. He's burned up his feet and jeopardized his season. <laughs> and John Gruden's out here having to explain and rationalize this. He can't even install the offense. Well, you just give a guy this much new money, and, and he's this kind of productive player, your whole offense is built around him. And he's too immature to, to handle this helmet thing, his, whole, his own health. You know, I was talking with someone that knows, that played for John Gruden and knows him well. And, and, and John Gruden's offense is built on a receiver going over the middle on third and four and five. And, and this person who knows Gruden well, knows the offense well, is like, I just don't know if A.B. wants to be the guy going over the middle on third and five because John Gruden's offense is built for that. There's a premier receiver, third and four. We're coming to you over the middle. You're going to have to take that hit. I don't think A.B. wants to live that See, life. But I don't know. I think as long as A.B. is on the field, there's going to be two people dealing with him. Mm -hmm. So some other receiver can go over, you know, if that's really the principle that they're trying to get to. He, he is such a problem from a, from a defensive standpoint that you have to game plan for him every down that, that he's on the field. And that opens up things for other guys. So even if he's not as productive as he should be because of his feet early in the season, his presence alone will push coverage to him in ways that other guys can't, can't get done. If you think A.B. doesn't want the ball on third down, you're crazy. And if they got an offense that requires him to go over the middle to get it and he has a problem with it at 30, 31 years old, wouldn't shock me. So would you, what was your defense I'll call? Over cover too? Yeah. I'll right. tell you what to do, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's been said that John Gruden's first play of the regular season has more words on it than your whole script does, okay, <laughs> in his offense. Yeah, yeah. So there's a reason he wants him there and, and, and running and doing things and huddling and going through the stuff because it's not, it's not an easy offense. It's not a player-friendly offense. It's a Phenomenal offense. He does a great job with it. But you understand why he wants wants the receiver there with the quarterback and wants to go. And then you take you look at that foot thing and well it, it it was it was an accident. It wasn't his fault. Okay, well, what's he telling us there? Well, the guy didn't go off on the fourth of July and blow three of his fingers off because he was playing with fireworks after he was told not to. Okay, he went over to try to take care of his body and somebody did something wrong and he can't practice. So I just think it's way too soon to be spending this much time on all this and things are going to settle. And, oh, so and now if, if A.B. If a. B. decides to retire, then, then um, I'll take credit for your <laughs> opening monologue. Yeah. Uh, let me, I already know you all's answer to this, but I'm going to ask the question anyway. I, too soon for the Raiders to be thinking of an exit strategy here? <laughs> Absolutely. The, the, the grand eraser is in A.B.'s hands in terms of his catches, his production. Once he hits the field, once they show that chemistry, once they get in sync, this is, this is not even noise. This is forgotten. It doesn't need, you don't even have the residue of this moment if they hit the regular season and do something. If this team makes the playoffs, 
It's kumbaya right now for the okay, Raiders. Okay, let's say A.B. Done. shows up and is just as productive. He's A.B. But, but a coach is trying to establish a culture. And your guy you just paid, who's going to be the centerpiece of your offense,